Laser sights will make you a more accurate and confident shooter by providing visual feedback on sight alignment and trigger control. Crimson Trace, making laser sight standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. The number one national voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. Gun Talk, available on iTunes and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for Android and iPhone. To be on the air with Tom, call us now, 866-825-5486 or 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. Howdy, howdy! Hour three of Gun Talk, and we're going to—we have a lot to talk about. We're talking about my um, kind of my epiphany, slow to get to it, I guess, about Democrats and gun control. I've given up on the whole just vote for the right person, regardless of the letter next to the name. Any vote for a Democrat is a vote for Nancy Pelosi, Charles Rangel, Charles Schumer, the leaders of the Democrat Party, and they will do what they want to do. They will do what they say they will do. They tell us, look, our goal is to take away your guns. Hillary Clinton says, our, my goal is to do away with the Second Amendment. The Supreme Court got it wrong. That, she always puts it that way. The Supreme Court got it wrong on the Second Amendment. So she's going to put in justices who will get it right, which is you don't have a Second Amendment. They'll still have it on the books. They'll never take it off the books. They'll just say, well, it doesn't mean what you think it means. It doesn't mean that you can actually own a gun. It means that the National Guard can have guns. And therefore, we can restrict your gun ownership any way we want to. We will put you on a terror watch list. And once you're on the list, of course, if you're not safe to fly, you shouldn't be safe to own a gun. Why would you let we would let you do that? As if it's up to them to allow us to do anything. Interesting concept. People say, well, you know, they allow that there. No. In some places they prohibit things, but the government is not in the allowing business. That wasn't how it was formed. That's not what it's about. It's not what it's about. All right, let's go to the phones here. Line five, uh, Rob is uh, calling in. Rob Morse is with us right now. And, uh, and Rob, we should explain that you got a chance to do something that uh, not a lot of people do, right? That's right, Tom. I got to attend a firearms training course that's normally designed for teachers. These are teachers who want to protect their students. They become the good guys with a gun and a bandage. The program's this called is in Faster Ohio. In Ohio, and mm-hmm. it, it, it once they complete that training course, they become anonymous protectors. That means they can't talk about it. I'm not a teacher. They invited me so that I could tell you. Oh, oh. so the teachers who take the class are prohibited from talking about it. But since you're not a teacher and you took the class, all right, you can talk about. It. So all right, so. Tell us, how is the class? Well, as you'd imagine, it's put on by Chris Serino and Michelle Serino. John Better mm-hmm. does the other class. So it's world-class class firearms instruction. The EMTs mm-hmm. that teach the trauma care are first rate. But what struck me the strongest is that it's really heart training, Tom. What do you, you mean by that? Well, you and I... And you've said this yourself. I've heard it on your show. You'd say, look, I'll I'll defend my family. I'm not sure about yours. These Mm -hmm. are teachers who have sworn to defend someone else's children. Yes. Wow. Wow. That's a a huge. That's it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. And they will never know when it's coming. They will. Most of them will use the first aid kit that they've been given. They'll use the hours and hours of trauma care. Let's face it, an accident in the parking lot is far more likely than a terrorist sure. or suicidal attack. But if it occurs, they will be on the spot, and the first notice that will happen is a boom from down the hall. 
And that's what I mean by heart training. They were trained, look, when this happens, there'll be nowhere to turn for permission, for confirmation. You're going to have to go, that doesn't sound right. Those screams don't sound right. That doesn't look right down the hall. Mm -hmm. I have to go investigate, and I'll be there ready to defend my students and stop the threat and save lives. How long was the class? How long is this training? Not long enough. It took three days and part of the night. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not there, not as long as you would like it to be, but at the same time, it's longer than most people are ever going to get. Yes, and that's their first training. This class is really the introductory course that would let most teachers in most districts carry in schools. It turns out that all but two of the school, uh, I'm sorry, of the counties in Ohio have sent staff to take this training. Ah, interesting. So, all right, so they've been doing this, as I understand it, several years. And for those who say, well, gee, you know, we can't let teachers have guns in schools. What if they would accidentally shoot one of these students? Of course, we know from the real world that that doesn't happen, hasn't happened. I assume they they cover the whole deal of how you're going to keep your gun and safe handling and storage and deployment and all of that, too, right? All of these teachers already have their concealed carry permit. They carry mm. off campus all the time. They've, they've gotten used to that just as you and I have. We talked about that. Um, some swim coaches, you know, had a question. We go, look, I, I don't have a solution for that. But the rest of the time, you, can, you have to have <laughs> it on your person. We mentioned a purse is not safe. No, no, no. Um, it, uh, I'm sorry, I lost your question. What else was it? No, 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 no. We're just we're talking about uh, the the training they get in making sure that for number one, a kid doesn't get their gun, but also j- the whole idea that you'll hear people say, and you've heard it. People say, well, you know, th- they're teachers; they're not really gun people, and they're not. Pol- or, or here's I like this one: they're not police officers. Well, you know, the police get their training in a lot of different things, but the actual training for what do you do if somebody comes in here, start shooting kids? That's actually a fairly clear situation and a clear objective, is it not? It, we did force-on-force force training that most policemen haven't done. Their mm. qualification exam has more shots than the police academy exam, and we're held to a higher standard of accuracy. So we have to exceed the training requirements used by the Ohio, Ohio Police Academy. To go back to your question about firearms retention, we did go through mm-hmm. a couple firearms retention exercises, ones that I hadn't seen before. Top notch. Hmm. Okay. So what was the attitude of the teachers? Uh, I know there are some people who say, well, teachers generally are these loving, nurturing people, and this is kind of at odds with their makeup. I don't see that, but I'm wondering what you saw in in the class. You're right. That was my impression, and I changed it. We did force-on-force training in a school, and as I'm walking through it with a guy, he's sweating. I go, "What? what's the matter, Mark? You know, I, I don't understand. He goes, this looks my school. We're going to do force-on-force. This could be my school. It looks just like it. Mm-hmm. And You know, this could be the day that if I didn't have a gun, I'd have to go hand on hand with somebody who's trying to kill my kids. These are exactly the sort of people we want defending our children. We had everybody from school treasurers who have an administrative office right in a school to Mm -hmm. school board members, PE coaches. Oh, um, custodians. Oh, sure. They have the keys to every room. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, they do. And you know what you've done with this class, what Chris and Michelle and crew are doing? They're building a whole group of first responders because the people in the rooms are always the first responders. For better or for worse, they're either going to respond well or not, but they are going to be the first responders. And that's critical. When we were doing the trauma care, well, I mean, Tom, it's not really about guns. In a classroom, it's about saving lives. Right. And we're doing trauma care. We find out that adults, you know, if you don't stop the bleeding, you have to do that in a minute. You have to get them breathing again in a minute. With children, it's less. You have to stop the threat and start treating the injured or more people will die. 
There it is. For those who don't know, this is program, it's called the FASTER program, Rob? Yes, sir. Faculty okay, and it's available in Ohio. Yes, in Ohio. You've never seen such a focused group of students as these teachers. <laughs> well, I appreciate the range report on this one. This is terrific. I thank you so much for sharing it. It is uh, a, a wonderful program, obviously taught by two terribly, terribly well-qualified people. Oh, actually more than that, Chris and Michelle, but also others teaching this. Teachers, first responders with guns. Oh, yeah, medical training, too. By the way, I'm just looking around here. I've got my medical kits here, my little packages I got from uh, Paul Markle, student of the gun. Studentofthegun.com. Get the little pocket kit that has the tourniquet, the gauze, the stuff in it, and then learn how to use it. <sighs> Car wrecks, whatever. Uh, camp accidents with a hatchet or a chainsaw. You're liable to need that. And that's how you're going to save people. If you keep them from bleeding out, you can save them and get them to the hospital. Simple stuff. What are you doing to protect your family. 866-TALK-GUN. Want to customize the look of your firearm and give it ultimate durability? Well, don't paint it. Cerakote it. Cerakote is a spray-on ceramic polymer coating that uses state-of-the-art technology to achieve superior abrasion resistance and corrosion protection. Field proven and trusted by manufacturers and gun owners like you, Cerakote is the industry's unmatched performance leader. In lab testing and real-world applications, Cerakote outperforms the competition every time. See for yourself and find a local certified applicator near you at Cerakote.com. Choose the best. Choose Cerakote and finish strong. FN handguns bear the DNA of legends, of John Browning, the father of modern firearms, of the artisans and craftsmen who brought his genius to life, of the brave souls who defended our freedom on the front lines for the last hundred years, and the brave souls who defend it on the home front today. FN Handguns, the DNA of legends in the palm of your hand. Ask for FN, the world's most battle-proven firearms. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. Great Trigger can make you a better shooter. For over 60 years, Timney Triggers have been trusted by hunters and shooters everywhere. Timney Triggers are proudly made in the USA and come with a lifetime warranty. Installation is easy. Give yourself the Timney Trigger advantage. To see more and order online, go to TimneyTriggers.com. That's T-I-M-N-E-Y Triggers.com. Back with you here, 866-TALK-GUN. Let's talk to Fred on line one. He's in Pratt, Kansas. Hey, Fred. Thanks for calling. Well, thank you. Tom, I have a, it's kind of a question. I'm in the process, uh, process bought a short barrel uh, rifle through my trust, and it has to be approved for the ATF. It's been over mm-hmm. 90 days, and they still hadn't approved it, and the uh, I got kind of told that they were not approving it because they want in July 13th when that changes. And I was wondering if there's anything I could do to check it out or make it move a little faster. Actually, don't worry about it. You're good to go. Uh, if you have already gotten your paperwork in, you're grandfathered in, so nothing's going to change for you. So 
uh, you're not going to have to do the new requirements on the trust. As long as you've got your paperwork in and they have the serial numbers on your paperwork, just sit back. It's, it's Everything's being delayed right now because there's such a crush of people trying to get the registration on their SBRs and silencers and everything. But if you already have your paperwork in before the cutoff date, you are good to go. So d- don't worry about it. It's just it's going to take a while, but you're not going to have to do the additional stuff for the trust. Okay. That was my question. All right. Good. All right. So rest easy. Buy more stuff. There you go. Thanks, Fred. Uh, line four, David's with us out of Course Gold, California. Hey, David, what's the problem here? Well, uh, I have a CCW and I carry a Glock 36. Uh, as mm-hmm. I'm getting older, my uh, grip is getting weaker, not so much in my hand, but in my fingers. And I'm finding mm-hmm. the trigger pull to feel a lot heavier than it used to. And I thought, well, maybe if I could find another concealed gun with with a lighter trigger pull than the Glock. That's, what, that's the reason I'm calling or any recommendations you might okay. have. First question is, do you like the Glock? Yeah. If it had a better trigger, would you be okay with that? Yeah, if it was lighter pull. Okay. Uh, There's a company called Apex Tactical, A-P-E-X Tactical, and they make aftermarket triggers for Glocks. And you can get them... You know, I would go to Brownells, probably. That's my go-to place for stuff like that, brownells.com. You know, the good folks there. But yeah, it's called Apex Tactical, and it will be a little bit lighter. It'll be a good bit smoother. It'll be quite a bit improved. And I think for, it's in, it's like 80 bucks or something. I would try that if you like your pistol the way it is, other than the trigger. I would do that. Now, the other thing, and I know that you know this, Get yourself a tennis ball or something and just squeeze that sucker all day long when you're sitting around doing nothing and make, you know, strengthen up that grip. And that's the other way to go, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm at the point where I find a little difficulty uh, shooting uh, revolvers in double action, too. So Sure. Oh, yeah. I can, yeah. I can see that. If you have a, uh, don't have a real strong grip and as far as pulling the trigger, that could cause a problem. So you're going to need to strengthen that up because the other thing that happens, and this is kind of important, is... You need strength in both hands to control recoil for quick follow-up shots. So the stronger your hands are, the better you'll be able to shoot across the board. So in addition to, and I'm not saying one versus the other, in addition to getting a better trigger or getting an aftermarket trigger, I would encourage you to get one of those little grippy things for your hands or tennis balls or whatever. And just, you know, while you're sitting around watching TV or reading or whatever you're doing, just work on the, your grip strength. After a few months, it'll really make a difference. But squeeze the ball repeatedly that, huh? Yes, absolutely. Just squeeze the ball repeatedly. They actually have, I think it's called a Power Master or something. It's a little grip thing you can get at sporting goods stores that help you. And you can actually strengthen each finger individually. It's kind of a cool deal. Grip Master. Grip Master, I think it's called. But look into that. At the same time, get this trigger. I think it's going to help you. David, I wish you luck with it, and I appreciate the call, sir. Uh, Line two, Alan is in Medford, Oregon. Hey, Alan, what's your issue? Thanks for taking my call. Hey, back to your caller two two callers ago. Um, My wife tried to buy a gun and, uh, you know, did all that paperwork here in Oregon. And um, Mm -hmm. and she was, it was seven months and nothing happened. They hadn't denied it, but they wouldn't approve it, you know. So uh, I finally, I happened to be in Fred Meyer at the gun place and, uh, I talked to him about it. He gave me two pieces of paper about what what to do, and I, mm-hmm. I don't have the papers with me to give the guy the phone number. But it, he wasn't in Oregon, so he probably have to call a different okay. number. That's so, okay. He's got to, that's a different. Right, let me just tell you, that's a different issue. He's buying an SBR short barrel rifle that has to be registered with the federal government, just like a machine gun or a silencer does. And so he's going through the delay on that. But you're talking about actually getting a denial uh, or actually a a delay from the FBI on the background check for your wife, right? Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about the same thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a different deal. And, and, yeah, seven months is ridiculous. After... First of all, after three days, if it's a decent gun store, they should release the gun. If they won't, cancel the order. Go to another gun store. Because after three days, if they don't get a denial, if it's just delayed, they are allowed to put it forward. Although, wait a minute, 
That's Oregon. That's right. You don't actually live in the United States. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just being mean. Uh, you may not. They may not be able to do that in Oregon. But yes, you need to take action and go to the FBI with these forms and say, "Hey, let's kick this thing out." This is my wife. What's going on? She needs to apply for that. So anyway, so tell me about your Makarov that you have. The Makarov. I was trying to. I was trying to figure out how I could lube it so she would be able to cock it easier. And uh, I, I had the. I had the cartridge out and everything, and and but I didn't notice. But I had it on safety, and when I cocked it, and I let it go forward, the the uh, hammer would actually fire. Uh, is that normal? You know what I'm saying? In other words, if I... No. If I had, Explain to me exactly what the movements are. You're, you're cocking the hammer? No, no, I'm cocking... I'm sliding it. I'm, I'm sliding okay, it. So you're you're working the slide. You're, okay, when you work the slide okay. back, pull it all the way back, and your finger's not on the trigger, right? No. Okay, and then you release the slide. You just let the slide go and let it fly forward. Right, and then... The hammer goes, the hammer the hammer goes, goes forward. The hammer goes forward, and it would fire. I mean, it's going forward at full speed. Uh, uh-huh. but, it, but that's when it's on safety. I I real I didn't realize it's on safety. Anyhow, I noticed it was on safety, so I took it off safety. And then when I do it, it would cock just normally. The the hammer would stay back till I pulled the trigger. So, is there something wrong with my gun, or is it just normal? Is that normal? Problem. You know? I would not trust that gun. I don't want a gun where the hammer drops. If you release the, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that a, um, I don't care if the safety blocks a firing pin. Uh, I don't trust it. Is that a uh, decocker? I don't, I don't have a Makarov, so I don't know. Is that Does that use a decocker where you flip the decocker down and the hammer drops? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, okay, I okay. I, I, I don't know because I don't have a Makarov. Tell you what I'm going to do. Will you keep listening, and we're going to ask uh, for some callers, people that know the Makarov system. Maybe somebody can help us out here, because generally speaking, you don't want the hammer to drop when the slide drops. Um, I I don't think I would trust that gun until I figured it out. Even if it is a decocker, I don't, know, I don't, I don't think it is, though. But again, again, I don't know. I just don't know. We'll figure it out. But tell you what, if you know, help us out, because obviously I don't know the answer to this one. This is why I have all these friends out there who can... Straighten us out and say, hey, this is how that thing works. 866-TALK-GUN is our number. 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talks. Be right back. Gun Talk encourages you to support the local sporting goods store, gun stores, ATV dealers, and other local businesses in your area who advertise on this station and Gun Talk. Only together can we protect our rights. You're listening to Washington Times Opinion Page regular contributor Tom Gresham. All righty. Hey, I just uh, heard back from Rob Morris, who was just on talking about the Buckeye Firearms Group, the uh, the teacher training in Ohio, that's actually put on by Buckeye Firearms, Buckeye Firearms Foundation. And if you want more information about what they're doing, if you're in Ohio, you'd like to get involved in it, or if you're in another state and you're thinking, boy, I'd like to use this as a model, I would certainly recommend it. The website is BuckeyeFirearmsFoundation.org. Again, BuckeyeFirearmsFoundation.org. There you go. Line three, Clark, Wichita, Kansas. Hey, Clark, you have the floor. All right. I'm in Wichita, Kansas right now, but I actually live in Flathead County, Montana. Okay. And I I was thinking about your bear story, and and the fact is that almost any wild predator will chase something running before it will something sitting still. So outrunning the other guy might not be such a good idea. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good joke. <laughs> True. Uh, what I was calling about is a lot of people talk about this. I'm glad you're on the air, but I don't think a lot of people fully understand the reason that they want to take firearms out of civilians' hands. Okay. It's, it's not necessarily for for protection against terrorists or, or anything like that, or to keep guns from moving around. It's to keep them out 
of the normal person's hand. Why? Because the danger, judging by the way the government is going right now, the danger is they're going to take steps to force them from you. Uh, it's it's history. It's it's the same thing that happened in in oh, Germany. I agree. Com- I agree completely. I mean, we, we're already seeing it. We're seeing it uh, two days ago in California, where they passed uh, a law that says those guns we told you it was okay for you to have. Now you can't have them. Those magazines that we said you can own them. Now you can't own them. You either have to turn them in or give them away to somebody out of the state or sell them. But you can't own them anymore. It is a slow boiling of the frog and the part here's the part that concerns me let me ask you this clark is it happens over such a long period of time at any given moment a lot of people say well that's normal now background checks are normal waiting periods are normal fbi saying you can or cannot own a gun is normal To which I say, no, none of that's normal, nor is it right, nor is it proper, nor is it helpful, nor does it save lives, and nor does it reduce crime. None of it is right. All of it should go away. But you get boiled so slowly, you just think that the conditions you're in right now are kind of, that's just kind of the way it is. What do you think, Clark? I think that's the alarming thing that's happening now. I think if all of this that would have happened in the last year would have happened quickly, even Mm -hmm. quicker than it was. We've gone 20 years, and I've got friends that say they've been saying that a long time. It's not going to happen. Yes, it is going to happen. This administration is totally different. It's It's, right. Here's the thing. It's it's, it's, It's not that it's not going to happen. It's that it is happening now. That's the whole deal. People say, well, it's not going to happen. Well, wake the F up. It is happening now. The police are going to homes when somebody dies in some states and saying, turn in those guns because you people who are left, you don't have the proper permit to own those guns, so we will take them away. Therefore, as a generation dies off, we get all their guns. Those are out. Happens slowly. It's the boiling of the frog deal. Let me go way back. Let me paint a picture of this world where I grew up. A 10-year-old boy or girl could sell magazines, make money, or get prizes for selling magazines, and one of those prizes may be a gun, and the gun would be delivered to the door by the U.S. Post Office, and this 10- or 12-year-old youngster now owns a gun, perfectly legal. That same person could mow lawns or do whatever it takes to make some money. And they go down to the hardware store. And oh, by the way, there was no such thing as a licensed gun store. Guns were sold in gas stations, in hardware stores, in drug stores. Anybody who had a a retail outlet could sell guns. No issues. No problems. But it made it difficult for those in power to know who had the guns. So they instituted a program in 1968 called the 1968 Gun Control Act. And I hesitate to explain this, but I think it's important enough to do it. The research has been done not by me, not by the NRA, but by a very interesting group called the Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, who say never again. As Jews all around the world say but don't do anything about because the JPFO, their deal is we're going to have guns. We're Jews who have guns, and you're not going to massacre us. You're not going to have genocide against us. So they did the research, the JPFO. They took the 1968 Gun Control Act. It was written by Tom Dodd, congressman, and they compared it to the Nazi laws on guns, and they are word for word identical. How weird is that? All right, enough of the whole conspiracy deal. The whole the, the main point here is for those who think it is perfectly normal for there to be licensed gun stores and for you to have to ask may may I please buy this gun? Now, this is a 
constitutional guaranteed right. But for you to ask the permission of the FBI, that's not normal. That's not right. That's not the way it was designed in this country. All these other gun control laws we have are not normal. They're not right. They're not helpful. They don't reduce crime. Never have, never will. You can't reduce crime. You can't control the behavior of evil people by putting restrictions on good people. That makes no sense on the face of it. So what's the answer? We have to declare war on gun control. It's really simple. It's not easy. I didn't say it was easy, easy, but it's simple. We have to say, no, we're taking it all back. We're taking it all back. And that's the goal. We're going to take it all back. We're going to get rid of of every gun control law there is. Well, that's just radical, Tom. (laughs) Ha ha, I bet your bippy it is. If we're not radical, we're not going to get anywhere. If we're not out there, we're not going to get anywhere. If we're not demanding this, we're not going to get anything. If we demand everything and we get 10%, guess what? We just made a 10% advance. Otherwise, we're playing defense and we're losing a bit by bit by bit by bit over the last 40 years. That's where we are. Time for a new plan. Are you on board? 866-TALK-GUN. At Double Tap Ammunition, we hand inspect every round that we make and we use only the best components to give you the best ammunition on the market. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. The XDM 3.8 Compact from Springfield Armory is two guns in one. Use as your concealed carry gun with a compact magazine and use the extended magazine for home defense. Carry 13 rounds of 9mm in the compact magazine and a whopping 19 rounds in the extended magazine. To see the entire family of Springfield Armory XDM pistols, go to SpringfieldArmory.com. That's SpringfieldArmory.com. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. Gluten free at the App Store and Google Play or gundelio.com. Accurate, powerful, consistent. At Double Tap Ammunition, we offer 364 loads in 83 calibers that give you exactly what you've been looking for. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. Let's go to the phones. Harold's on four. Sand Springs Oak. Hey, Harold. All right, let's go. John is in Warsaw, Indiana. I believe that is line two. Hey, John. Hey, how's it going? Good. Makarov, help me out. Okay, so I have the uh, true Makarov, which is the Pistolet, uh, Pistoletta Makarova uh, Makarov PM. Um, I can't speak for the FEG or the Polish Radom, which are also in the same chamber, or chamber for the same cartridge. Um, but it does have a decocker. Okay. So and, if you have uh, the safety decocker engaged and you rack the slide, does the hammer fall and follow the uh, slide down? So when you decock it, it puts it on safety and nothing moves. The trigger doesn't move. Hammer or slide will not move. Oh. So, uh, basically, if you if he can put the slide back, it, it puts the hammer down, puts it into single mm-hmm. action mode, um, then 
that's normal operation with it off safety. With it on safety, you can put it on safety when it's not uh, racked uh, or if it's decocked, nothing moves. So it sounds like something's messed up with his gun. I was just going to say, sound like something's not right, because he said he could actually put pull the slide back with the safety slash decocker on, release the slide, and then the hammer would fall forward with the, as the slide goes forward, which kind of makes sense, except that you're saying that you shouldn't be able to work that slide at all with the safety on. Right. Hmm. Okay. That's helpful. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Um, let's see here. Let's go line one. Scott's with us out of Kansas with some more help on this. Oh, all right, let's go to Harold. I'm sorry, Harold. I made a mistake there. Harold on four. Hey, Harold, help me out on the Makarov. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's go to Daryl. It's Daryl in Great Falls, Montana. Hey, Daryl. Hi. How you doing? Um, I'm yeah, good. I just listened to you on the uh, 68 Gun Control Act and and how you know people find it hard to believe that before that you could just walk into the store and buy a gun, any Western Auto or Gmart or anywhere. Woolworths, uh-huh. or mm-hmm. uh, just order from Sears Roebuck and Company. It, and if you do uh, just a quick Google search and do uh, uh, gun deaths by uh, by a year, gun deaths stru- shot straight up after that. You, know, you mean so after, after we <laughs> after we had the Gun Control Act of nineteen sixty eight? Yeah, they sure did. It's just a quick Google search, and uh, and it's just go right down the column. And they from in wow. a decade, they I think I believe they came close to doubling, like 60 70% increase. And, uh, you know, one more comment that, you know, on this whole California thing, it's just kind of amazing that the same people who uh, just want to restrict gun ownership are the ones just bending over backwards to let uh, criminals go, like the guy that shot yes. Kate Steinle, for example. Well, yeah, uh, they, they, just, they, they do go, let the they criminals go. They go out of their go. way to just to, to let them loose on us. The, the very job that we pay them to do. <laughs> well, let, let me ask you a question. If, if you paid some, if you had a business and you paid somebody to do a job and they refused to do it and they wouldn't do it and they actually worked against your business of what you're they're supposed to be doing, wouldn't you fire them? Absolutely. It'll take five. Well, minutes. I think yeah. I, I think that's where we are. You know, there, there's an old line, and look, thanks for the call that I particularly like. The question is. Do you know when the best time to fire somebody is? And the answer is the first time you think of it. There it is. So there you go. Robert's on one out of California. Hey, Robert, you got a mess out there now, don't you? Oh, gosh darn. You know, I split the state. I'm on the right side, and I want to, you know, split it right down the middle. But, you know, you're talking about taking friends to the gun range, and I love doing that. I like finding people who are anti-gun or, or whatever, and then bring them to 22 and just have a blast. But, you know, in the mm-hmm. new law now, we can't do that in January. So they, Explain what you mean, because I, I don't think people understand that. You actually cannot take somebody, well, I'm you not sure. I haven't your, actually read the whole deal. Yeah, you can't hand your gun to anybody, family members, I think is okay. Still, we, you know, I'm still looking at the law, but I know mm-hmm. that it's the same thing as like Washington and and Oregon. Uh, you can't hand your firearm to somebody, uh, a friend or whatever. Or, this is one of the new uh, laws that were just passed, uh, just signed yeah. into law by Jerry Brown out there. One of the provisions and what we're talking about, thanks, Robert, is that I know you can't loan your gun to somebody. We say, well, look, here's a. Yeah, you, you know what? You you would love this twenty eight gauge. Look, just take it take it to the range this weekend. Well, to do that in California now, after this goes into effect, you'd have to do a, go to a dealer. You have to do the background check. You have to do the ten day waiting period. If I have this right, then that person can get hunt with it or shoot with it for the weekend. It has to come back. Now you have to do the background check. You have to go to the dealership. You have to do the waiting period again for you to get your own gun back. So it's roughly in the order of 30 days for you to loan somebody a gun for the day for them to go out to the range. Hadn't thought of that. If you can't take people to the range, and I don't, I'm not sure that's the case. i got to find out about it. If you can't take people to the range, is it possible that was part of the goal of this, is to prevent us from bringing more people into the shooting sports? They're not that devious, are they? Yes, they are. I'm declaring total war on gun control. More in just a sec. (music) 
And by the way, if you have not seen it, you owe it to yourself. Go to probably the GOA website has it or YouTube has it. Uh, this week, Eric Pratt from the Gun Nerds of America absolutely schooled Carol Costello on a CNN interview. Costello was trying to shut him down with, oh, yeah, well, the government has blocked all research on guns. And he was saying, no, that's actually wrong because they, the president required this research by the CDC. And it shows, and she, well, no, there is no study like that because the Republicans blocked it. And he finally just got through to her where she finally like stopped and had this epiphany like, yes, I'm stupid. I'm showing the world how stupid I am on the air. Maybe I should close my mouth and stop showing everyone how absolutely uninformed and ignorant I am. It was a stunningly beautiful moment, and kudos to Eric Pratt from GOA for doing that. If you haven't seen it, you owe it to yourself to take a look at it. It's uh, Eric Pratt from the Gunners of America making mincemeat of CNN's Carol Costello. Okay, here's the deal. The gun ban forces, and that's all there is. There's no such thing as a gun control group that's not a gun ban group. It's not. If you believe that, you have been brainwashed. You have been fooled. They want to take your gun away. No, that's not right. They want to take all your guns away. Piece by piece, because they know they can't do it all at once. They would like to do it all at once, but they know they can't. And they've been making a lot of headway over the last 50 years. 1968 Gun Control Act. That gave us licensed gun dealers. It gave us uh, 4473 forms, which everybody says, oh, that's just the way it is. No, it's not. So here's the deal. We have been losing. Yeah, we, we, we win some now and then. And we got Heller and we got McDonald. And then we watch the Supreme Court and the lower courts take it apart and marginalize it, minimize it, and make it less than it is and less than it was. The only way we win this, the only way, is to declare war on gun control as a whole. There is no such thing as common sense gun control law. No age limits. I mean, come on, those, that 12 and 13-year-old, the Williams sisters who are just shooting up the, uh, the competition circuit and tearing it up, why should they not be able to own a gun? It used to be a 12-year-old could run the farm, could run the tractor, could drive the truck, could feed the cows, could go out at 4 in the morning, could take care of them in a blizzard, and now our precious snowflakes can't do anything. And of course, therein lies another issue. None. Zero. Now, we may say, well, I, we can't get to that. Okay. That's fine. Let's get some of it. Oh, gee, doesn't that sound a little bit like them? It's a good first step. We can't repeal all the gun control laws, but we'll start with this one. That'll be a good first step. And then we're going to repeal the next one. Then we're going to get preemption laws passed. And then we're going to take away requirements to have permits to carry guns because that is a constitutionally guaranteed right. And how do we get there? How do we get there? We change our thinking. We are now not supporters. We're warriors in this battle. And every single day when you're having your Wheaties, your Cheerios, your cup of coffee, you're thinking, what am I going to do today in the great war? The great war against gun control. I'm going to call. I'm going to fax. I'm going to email. I'm going to send up smoke signals. I got to do whatever I can to contact my elected representatives. I'm going to go to school board meetings and I'm going to get shut down these stupid zero tolerance policies where if you eat a pop tart into the shape of a gun, you get kicked out of school. There are a lot of battles to be fought. There are a lot of battle lines to be pushed back. I would ask you this, on this Independence Day, on this Independence Day, will you take the pledge? Will you declare war on gun control laws? I am there. I'm going to do everything I can. I hope that you are. Be safe, my friends. Take care. God bless America.